Welcome back to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. We are in studio, back in studio, with a uh, fan favorite already, fan favorite <laughs> guest, Mr. Trey Wright. Uh, did so good in that first one, man, telling your story. It was powerful. If you haven't heard the first episode or if you haven't watched that first video, you got to go back and hear his story because it's going to give a lot of context to this next segment. We wanted to bring you back in, Trey, and... Uh, uh, let's talk about your process and your mindset. Before we got going here, you guys were talking about Jordans. Oh, yeah. You guys were oh. talking about shoes, and I know you both got shoe games, so why don't we open up with the shoe game and talk about <laughs> process <laughs> my, and mindset. Let's do that. My shoe game went away years ago. So the pro- my biggest issue is my shoe game started in my transition from middle school all the way through high school, and I went from five foot two to six foot two. Oh wow! And uh, so that doesn't that doesn't go well when you're buying Jordans and nice shoes because it was like every two months I was in a different size. Right. Well, disclaimer: I've never. This is my. I don't have a shoe game. Uh, I'm yes. only, I was yes. only able to buy these until now. Yeah, until now. Until <laughs> I had to be seven months into selling life insurance before I had access to buy some Jordans. So we're here. So we've made it. <laughs> hey, listen. I know a lot of people are broke as. And they got Jordans, and yeah. they're, they're getting them somehow. But uh, you know, they look like they got money, but they ain't got no money. Well, uh, these were a gift from my fiance Devin for uh, my birth. My birthday is Wednesday. Um, but well, like, happy birthday! Thank you. I'm gonna be turning 27. Um, she gifted them to me. I, she wanted to wait, but I pressured her. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've learned some sales skills, and hopefully, you're gonna share yeah. a little bit with us today yeah. on how you were able to, you know, because she didn't get me a Valentine's Day gift. She was like, "It's a mixture." I was like, "Well." It's a mixture. We're, we're in the middle. <laughs> we're for it's my birthday mixture. and Valentine's Day. <laughs> like we're in the middle, so I need it now. I so. got you such a beautiful gift. It's it's from splitting between Valentine's and your birthday because I spent some money. Yeah. So uh, here they come. Yes, sir. Uh, Trey, question for you. What's your favorite podcast out there? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, as of right now, um, it is a podcast called Life Insurance Academy. Uh, I was going to say, Adam, cut his mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no but I, honestly, one of my favorites is uh, it's a podcast called Pivot Podcast. Pivot. Okay. Yes, sir. It's got uh, um, Ryan Clark, Channing Crowder, and uh, uh, the running back on there. It's a, full, it's a sports podcast, but they, they talk about um, the mental aspect of a athlete after their sport endeavor is over with. Mm-hmm. And... I connected with it instantly, so that's kind of why I gravitated towards it. Um, yeah. And I just love watching it because it's great insight. So I, I love that aspect because I'd say my my biggest strength in in business and insurance is is my is men, my mental side. I feel like I've developed that mental toughness from the sports background from growing up, and I know we've related on that very well. Yes, sir. And uh, and how that relates to kind of the sales process and what we're going to talk about today, like for me. Everything starts with that mindset. Everything starts with getting in that frame of mind, getting ready to win. Almost, uh, it almost reminds me of uh, the week before, or getting ready for that opponent, or you know, yeah. scouting them, figuring out tendencies. What do you need to do? What happens if they do this? Like literally laying in bed at night, going through the plays, going through what all the possible scenarios would be, and what would be your counter move, or how you would react to that. And dude, it might be crazy. I did that with insurance when I was starting. When yeah. I was in your seat, brand new, that's the stuff that was going through my mind. I thought I was crazy. Yeah, no, you're not crazy. I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing. And to be 100 percent honest, like on Saturday, like I'll text Mr. James and Ryan, like mm-hmm. this week's my week, and like it doesn't always turn out to be that way. But it, is that it's a reoccurring a, text? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's got to set on auto text. Yeah. He just yeah. auto sends on Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So. Um, it's just, you know, I get real competitive. Um, I try not to let it. I can get too competitive sometimes where I'll get hard on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm getting better with that. But, yeah, it's kind of – it's a friendly competition. Um, yeah. It's not as intense as it once was, um, especially with sports. But now it's just kind of like, you know, I, I told Mr. James I, I was getting on him. I was like, I beat you last week. Like. <laughs> mentoree takes over mentor like what's up dude? and he had somebody in his car with him training he was like 
all right. He was like, let's see about this next week. And he was riding by himself, and yeah. he outrode me by like 8,000. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, all right, I'll just stop yeah. talking. <laughs> and that's the thing I love about insurance and, and the mindset behind it. Like, for me, like, you're competitive with yourself. I relate it to the game of golf a lot because – you're really out there. For, you're for you. You're for, you're for family. You're trying to do the absolute best you can in every single door knock, every single phone call, every single client you talk to and speak to them about insurance. You really want to do the absolute best you can. But that doesn't mean you can't compete with other people. And what I mean by that is a lot of times being competitive with yourself because everybody here wants you to win. And I would say, you know, especially us at Life Insurance Academy, like we want everybody in the industry to win no matter where they are, where they're from, where they're listening from. Like that's that's really what we want. Mm. That's the kind of culture yeah. we're trying to create. Um, but within that, you have to want to win for yourself. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's good to use, and I call it friendly competition. You use the people around you, use the people on your team in a friendly way, and you use them as leverage. Because sometimes competing with yourself, you may or may not be mentally strong enough for that to be enough. You may have to use or point out somebody like on a Roger told a, a story, I don't know if it was on a podcast or in one of your keynotes about identifying the person in front of you and mentally locking in and you're going to, you're going to take you them over. Them you reel them you in, reel you reel them, them in. in. And, and, and you keep doing that. And, and, uh, you know, when I very first started, um, uh, coming into this, heck, I didn't even know if I could sell anything. Right. Not only that, the youngest dude here was in his 40s. There was nobody even young. I'm like, I'm supposed to talk to seniors? I'm like, I'm young. Are they going to listen to me? So yeah. it, it almost wasn't validated with anybody my age in our organization. And uh, I just started listening and learning and reeling people in. Yeah. The next thing you know, you know I, w I was there. So, But it was an all-friendly, competitive way, like with your mentor, with James. And by the way, I hope... I hope, uh, you know, you got to be careful because by the time this podcast releases, you know, if, if, if you are slightly ahead of him this week, whenever this podcast releases, he's going to turn it on and make sure he beats you. Oh, and he's going to hear, he's <laughs> going to hear about it too. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, for way of context, uh, if you hadn't listened to the last episode with, uh, with Trey, Trey Wright here, uh, Trey's been with us, uh, with the advanced team for about seven months yes, sir, and, uh, maybe eight months by the time this airs, but uh, you've been on a run, man, for this last two to three months, and sure. it's a run that I'm super impressed with. But you've not been in the business long. You didn't come in with any sales background, no no background in sales at all. Nope. In fact, you, there's some baggage there, yes, and uh, you had to overcome a lot mentally, emotionally, and get yourself in a place where you feel like helping people was something that Trey Wright was actually capable of doing. Uh, but you got connected to a, a good mentor, as you've heard uh, him talk about, Mr. James Dar. James has been a guest on the podcast before, blew it up, one of our most popular episodes. Uh, he's connected with James, got some great running buddies here. He's connected inside of the advanced team organization. And, man, this last 90 days, you, you've just stepped it into another gear. Sir. I think you're averaging about 6,000-plus in annualized premium a week right now. Yes, sir. And uh, you work about four days a week. You're doing face-to-face -face sales. Yes, sir. You're working in the final expense market right now. Yes, sir. And um, tell us about what your process looks like, man. When do, when does your when does your setup start? Because I know that you you yeah, go I back wanna, to I want to hear you, about the prep of this. Yeah, you go back to your high school days when you were playing, you know, high school football for one of the winningest high school programs in Kentucky, yes, probably sir. in the country, really. Um, and I know you got a lot of disciplines from that. Yep. Uh, so how do you now get ready? Let's talk about your your mental prep and your physical prep of how you get ready to win the following week yes sir so it it used to start uh when i first started it started on sunday hmm. um i would wash clothes put my leads in get my bag packed um but it got to the point where i was doing that later and later and later in the day so it would be s sunday night at six and i haven't even started my mm -hmm. load of laundry yet yeah um and so I told Mr. James this, and I told him it was a. F I keep. I'm sorry. I keep calling him Mr. James Dar. I call him Mr. James. Um, I told him I, th I thought it was affecting me. So he was like, "Let's try to do this on a Saturday then. Get everything taken care of on a Saturday." So that's kind of my process now. I get my everything done, uh, and in my GPS ready to go by Saturday night. Um, so that's kind of where my week starts on Saturday. So Sunday, um, it's more of a mental day for me, mentally preparing. Um, 
because I mean, you guys. What does that mean? Like, walk me through a, a mental pairing. I mean, everybody can listen and understand. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I need to stop procrastinating. I need to do my laundry. I need to get my leads, uh, you know, all routed of the clients I'm going to see, or I need to call and set my appointments or whatever I need. But the mental, like having a mental prep day. So some people may not know how to do that or what is involved in that. Right. Um, I kind of look at it as like a a. What's a good word for that? Destimulating day. Um, Because as you guys know, I mean, going through the whole week, you talk to so many people, like it's overstimulating. Mm -hmm. Like your brain hurts. You know, (laughs) because when you write that many apps, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, you know, even if you don't write apps, you could spend two hours in a home trying to find an avenue to help a family, and you even, you never come to that conclusion. So you spent two hours of thinking, and your brain hurts, and you didn't get an outcome out of it, you know? So, um, Sunday's just kind of a relaxed day. I'm not doing too much thinking. I'm not, uh, I know that everything is ready to be taken care of. All I got to do is pick, like Zach always says, pick my bag up and turn the key. That's all I got to do. Um, and also kind of making sure Sunday I'll kind of go through my folders, making sure I have all my folders, um, with all the product, um, stuff in it ready to go you're talking about carrier products yes, and folders sir. that you might use when you're in the home with clients yes sir okay um and just kind of um getting rid of any type of uh what's the good what's a good word for that um expectation right because I, I, I found out if i go into a week with an expectation that usually i usually don't meet it so trying to uh just clear my mind of everything and so monday morning when i wake up i'm completely fresh there's nothing that surprises me there's nothing that you know i get down about it's just kind of even keel throughout the week yeah does that make much sense it, it does I, okay. and i think an important piece of that is uh being organized and i've always um i've always been a very kind of borderline ocd like very organized and and the thought process behind that for me was there's no way you can be mentally organized if you're not actually organized in the things that you're doing because you don't know where they're at you don't know if you're prepared as far as if you need to write a certain company's application if you don't have phone signal and the e-app's not working if some client's dog bites your ipad and it shuts off like can you still write the business are you prepared for whatever situation um and i think that gives you a a calming peace of mind mentally going into the week that you're prepared for whatever the situation and man, I would I would take I had this extra bin in my car, like no lie. Yeah. Um, and I would have a mini shovel, mini shovel in there. Really? I would have flashlights. I would have a an extra like heated blanket type thing. Um, I would have an extra presentation or whatever cellus materials that I would possibly need. Um, I would have an extra raincoat. Yeah. I would carry an extra change of, of jeans or something because, and believe it or not, like. I've had to dig like three or four agents out of a cornfield in a car. <laughs> there's, there's, there's pictures and proof of that. And don't ask me how in the world. Why are they in a cornfield, Zach? That, that's I, what I want to know. I don't. And they're facing the wrong way. Like, what? That's what do you a, mean? Is there a wrong way? Oh Is there a right God. way to face in yeah, a cornfield? Like, usually the cornfield's <laughs> there, and then the road's here. When the car's facing the road, like it just came from the cornfield, <laughs> that's the wrong way. <laughs> So they're not going into the cornfield. They're actually trying to get back out. Yeah, it turns out they've been driving in it for a mile, basically, <laughs> on a wet day, and the car bottomed out, and all four tires are stuck in ruts. Oh, and, man. Yeah. yeah it's, so uh, that's a guy who's prepared. He's yeah. got a shovel. Yes, yeah, sir. In, in I've never bin. had to use the shovel for me, but I have had to use the shovel. But it's just like, man, just mentally knowing. And, and it's not just... And I don't care if you never use any of that equipment, but if you just know you have it and you're prepared for it, you never think about it again. Right. You just feel content with it. Right. So, Trey, talk about your uh, your leads. How many leads do you run? How much money do you invest in each week in leads? What's your goal? How many people do you do you, do you, you know, try to see each week or each day? Let's talk about that. Yes, sir. Um, so, as of right now, I'm taking anywhere between 20 to 25 leads out each week. So it kind of ranges from about 700 bucks to about 950 bucks. Uh-huh. Um, it's been mainly 25 here lately. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I'll go a little less, uh, just depending on kind of what we have in certain counties and things like that. Sure. Um, but I. I'm persistent. Um, so if I knock on a door at 10 a.m. and I know they didn't answer it at 10 a.m., um, I'm writing down on my lead, no one home, 10 a.m., and then I'll kind of circle back 
um, kind of depending on if they're all centrally located, um, I'll hit that house three times in a day. Mm. Um, so it would be 10 o'clock, you know, morning, afternoon, and at night. And evening, yeah. Yep. So at that time, I know um, the probability of them ever being home, you know, depending on what they have going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just kind of helps. I just like being persistent because if I can catch them, if I can hit that house three times in a day, my percentage of finding them home is going to be a lot higher. Exactly. Now, when do you when do you typically hit the field? Like, you know, let's say on a Monday if you're traveling or just on a regular day, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so we've been in West Virginia the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's about a four-and-a-half-hour drive. Okay. Um, so you go that far each week to write business, or yes, some sir. weeks. Yes, sir. Not all weeks, well, but some weeks. Well, we've been in West Virginia for about eight weeks, so the past eight weeks. Boom. Yes, sir. And apparently there's a lot of people that need insurance he's in West a, Virginia. He's a paper chaser, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so... Mr. James is first door knocks at ten o'clock. Do we need to? Do we need to like uh, block that out so they don't hear what state that was where he's having all the success yeah. so that <laughs> all the good leads don't get taken? I know I'm sure all I'm these people <laughs> listening to the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Um, so, but Mr. James is 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 persist, uh, persistent, and the way that he taught me and that I learned is first door knocks at ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter how far you had to travel. Yes, sir. Um, so, as in West Virginia, we get up and I'm probably hitting the road around six thirty. Yeah. Um, that puts me my first door knock probably around, you know, ten twenty, ten thirty, which is okay. But if your first door first door knock, I can't even speak. I'm sorry. First door knock is after eleven. Yeah. Uh, then you're late. Um, so you better be there at ten or a little bit after ten. Yeah. And that's uh, I believe my farthest drive so far was about f- almost six hours to Tennessee. Um, so we got up. I believe I left the house around. It was like four forty five. To get to so for context, you don't have any preset appointments. You're not calling because I want our listeners to know, like when when he talks about getting into the field and his first door knock, you you actually route your leads. You take all of your leads, put them into a GPS. I'm assuming, right? Yes, sir. I know your process. So, yes, sir. and then you're just showing up and you're knocking. Yep. On, on, on a route, basically, to and so these people don't know you're coming until you knock on their door. Yes, sir. So that's your process. You yeah. don't preset appointments on Saturday or Sunday. So no, sir. I just wanted you guys to hear the the context of of, of how he's of how he's set up because if you're in that market, these are some things that you would need to consider doing. So um, you're you're hitting that first door at ten o'clock. What does that look like? What does that day look like for you? Um, hopefully, it's um, a very long day with expiring very little leads. You know, um, so <laughs> just what that day looks like is just I don't eat lunch. Um, usually if I do, I'll stop at a gas station and get a couple protein bars. Um, but I, I usually don't have a full meal till dinner um, because I don't want there to be a time and period if I'm not knocking. Uh, that's the opportunity to find somebody home. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knock from 10 a.m. to probably my last house is around se- uh, 7, hoping mm-hmm. that I get in and stay there till you know, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Yep. Um, and I'm knocking that whole entire time outside of, you know, stopping and getting gas and things like that. But I do not stop for food. Um, I bring waters with me. Um, so I drink water all day and it's just knocking. If somebody doesn't answer, I'm right to the next one. Someone doesn't answer, I'm just consistently going right to the next one. So back to the GPS thing, I kind of, kind of gave that away there, but yep. Why do you why do you route them in a GPS rather than just showing up and then finding the next one? Because uh, the G, when you put them into the, the GPS, they show you uh, from closest to farthest. Yeah. Um, so I'll go to my closest house on my GPS from my apartment in Louisville. And as soon as I hit that, I can just click one button and it shows me my next target, which is the closest target. And I click that and I head directly to that and so on and so forth. So it's very simple and it's easy way to uh, keep track of your business. So if I have a delivery notice and somebody's not home, I'll enter my GPS. I'll put a D next to their address on my GPS. So then I know I've already been to that one. So I can continue to work my fresh leads until you know I, I circle back around to my delivery notices. You just brought up something about delivery notices. So if our listeners are listening and they don't know what that is, I need you to give context. What is that? Yes, sir. Why do you do that? So I carry a little uh, yellow pad in my back pocket. Um, it says delivery notice on it, yep. and it has a four, uh, four. So it'd be like, who who are you looking for? Uh-huh. Um, it'll have a, a time stamp and uh-huh. a date, yep. and you'll sign your name. Put your name, not sign. Yeah. I'll put my name and put my phone number, uh-huh. um, and then I'll put first attempt. Yeah. And basically, what delivery notice is, it gets stuck on the door like a post-it note. Yep. Um, so if they're not home and they do come home. 
Um, they, they'll see that paper. Yep. And obviously it's something important enough to leave a delivery notice, so they're going to call my number and figure out what's going on. And then I can set an appointment with them um, to stop back by later in the week. Yeah. Yep. Now, do you do you answer the phone if you see your phone ringing and you're in another sit? What, what, what is, what no, sir. Like? So um, it, we let it go to voicemail. So that just happened um, this past week. Yeah. Uh, I left a delivery notice. Um, I was in another sit. The person had called and uh, left me a voicemail. And I, we called him back as soon as we got out of the sit, set the appointment, then wrote him the next day. Because yeah. he had a doctor's appointment. That's why he wasn't home. Told him what this was for. Um, he said, can you come back tomorrow at 10 a.m.? Said, yes, of course. First stop of the day there at 10 a.m., mm-hmm. first app of the day. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Nice. Now, one thing I appreciate about you, Trey, is is that mindset and that focus. You talked about being persistent. And that's not just at the door, because uh, I know we've had some conversations. Um, whenever you have leads that you haven't been able to get to or you haven't seen, um, you know, I know you typically like to pick up the phone or set appointments or call old leads. How do you, can you walk us through like the process of if you're a typical door knocker and, and a lot of old school door knockers, which I was one of them, mm-hmm. um, you're kind of taught or afraid of the phone or afraid to call anybody or afraid to, well, if I didn't knock on Monday to Wednesday, they're just gone forever. Can you kind of talk through that extra phase and what that has done for you when you started implementing that little second step? Yes, sir. Um, so if I know I'm going back um, to that same area or close, um, I won't call right away. OK, mm-hmm. uh, I'll just keep it for my next stack. But if not, when I call, um, it's either one or two things. If they've been home since I've been there, they've seen my delivery notice, so they're familiar with my name. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they haven't reached out to me, but they've seen evidence of me being there. Mm-hmm. Um, or two, they just, they're not home and something's going on. Um, but kind of like, I, I, the way I think about it is I'm paying for that lead, yep. and I'm going to get my money out of it one way or another. If, You're at, at least going to talk to them. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I do call, I'll tell them, you know, who I am, mm-hmm. uh, why I'm calling you, why I tried to, you know, show up at your house. Mm-hmm. Um, this information is very important, and I can't go back to my boss without getting you this information because that's what my job is. Um, and usually um, they're pretty uh, – you'll have your, you know, occasionals that turn you down, but majority of the time they're pretty welcome mm-hmm. to hearing the information. Then you just set an appointment yeah. uh, for the next following days and go and see them. Yeah, and uh, I'd say – few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, you asked me for a batch of uh, age leads as well. Yes, sir. Can you talk about what you did with those immediately and what was the result of that? Yes, sir. So I, um, And this was in addition to the leads you were already working. Yes, sir. Um, it was actually pretty crazy. I was in Corbin, Kentucky the week before, um, and I, we were headed to Tennessee the next week. I still had a little bit of leads left over in Corbin. So mm-hmm. on my way to Tennessee, I stopped in Corbin, ran those leads, um, ended up writing like three thousand um, dollars off of uh, two leads mm-hmm. um, that Monday morning. Then went to Tennessee and I had a lot of trouble finding people home. So I messaged you. I mm-hmm. said, "Can you please send me as many CPOs as you possibly can for this area?" Which is age leads. Yeah. Yes, which are age leads. Um, leads people with either already ran or didn't find nobody home. Um, Maybe they weren't as persistent as you. Right. <laughs> um, so I on Tuesday I stayed in the Airbnb. I uh, didn't go to work, and I sat down and I called every single lead. I ended up setting about eight appointments um, and ended up selling around $8,000 just off those age leads alone, right. just off calling CPOs. And then I still ran and ran my other fresh leads. Um, so I finished out almost like uh, it was like ten five that week. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. And that, that's the one thing I appreciate is, is the mindset. And, and, and new agents normally don't do that. Right. They either – only run age leads because they're trying to save every dollar they probably can't possibly can. They're they're not thinking of it and looking at it as investment. They're just trying to save everything. But the fact that you're able to take this amount of work or this limited week and you're trying to maximize it with everything you can, and it's very evident in your schedule, no matter how far you have to travel, um, the early, you know, how you're knocking on the door early, you're knocking as late as you possibly can. You're knocking that same house four or five times if that's what it's going to take you're calling if they're not answering um and also no matter what you're going to try to pick up any additional leads setting appointments like you really maximize your time and you do that on a weekly basis and that 
I think that contributes to you know you being so successful so young and yes, so so early into this opportunity. It's really cool. Thank you. And so once the it was the moment I realized that my success is in my own hands, just depending on how much I want to work for it. Yeah. Um, I just I'm gonna work my butt off. If that means I can make as much money as possible, and I've learned from like, like literally the best, you know, uh, Mr. James, Mr. Roger, Zach, and Mr. Chris, and I've even tapped into Jason, getting his picking his brain. Jason Richter. Yep, um, I've talked a little smack to Jason at the summit, <laughs> yeah. uh, but just friendly. But I've tapped into just about as many people as I possibly can, mm -hmm. and I've put everything that you guys told me into one and I'm just trying to just keep pushing it. And, you know, I feel, sometimes I feel lazy. If I work, if I have 25 leads and I work Monday to Wednesday, even if I have a good week, I still feel lazy sitting on my butt Thursday to Sunday. Like I could be, I could make another 6K if I work these days. So why not Absolutely. do that, you yeah. know? So I try to put as much effort into that as possible. Well, we've got, uh, we got a situation where <clears throat> You're running all your leads. You're trying to stay dialed in. How many of those 20 to 25 leads a week are you trying to sit with? Is there a number that you that you have a goal? Yeah, so I try to... Um, when I say sit, present. You know, present. Actually present. I yeah. try to present more than half. So I try to run probably 75% of my leads I try to get in front of and present. Um, hopefully I can sell about half of those. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because out of 25 leads, you're going to find... You're going to at least have four or five or six that are just... You're not going to find home. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to shoot for about 75, 75%. Um, our average, uh, our goal for the week for Patriot Group um, and with ATP is $4,200. Um, You've that, been exceeding that, though. Yes, sir. Why, yes, sir. What, what happened? Why are you exceeding that? Um, is it the extra leads? Because you went from 20 to 25. Yes, sir. It, you, it, could, you... yeah, it very well could be the extra leads, mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm getting better. Yeah, um, I think and you are too. Probably both. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think my presentation's getting a lot better. Uh -huh. um, it's getting a lot more understandable mm -hmm. and learning how to communicate it in a way. Um, and I think I'm just connecting with people better than I was before. Yeah. Um, you know, I still have relationships with clients. I never thought, you know, I got a 64 year old woman, you know, thanking me you know, and texting me and still thanking me a week later. Yeah. And especially when we were able to get her money back and she's calling me, thanking mm -hmm. me. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, dang, I didn't know I could impact your life like that. But it's just. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb on something. Go ahead. Like for you, knowing you kind of knowing your mindset, I don't I don't think you really think anything of the standard of 4200. I think you take a time frame of I'm working, I'm starting my work week here. I'm ending it here. And I'm just going to give 100% of my effort the entire time, and the numbers will always work in my favor. Yes, sir. Uh, is, is that more accurate than going for a certain number? Yes, sir. I did the. I don't look. We don't look at the numbers to the end of the week. Obviously, you kind of have an idea of what you do every day. Um, but the 4,200. That's kind of uh, just a like a base. I don't look at that 4,200. Neither does Mr. James or Ryan. We don't look at it and say, "All right, I've hit that. I'm good." Yeah. You know, like that's a minimum. Uh, right. Um, it, because it's getting to the point now that where I'm so confident in how we are in a home. Um, like, I get mad if I just have one app in a day. You know, I'm like, yeah. dude, that's not good enough. And Mr. Yeah. James is like, dude, there's some people, you know, that didn't, what you made today, there's people that don't make that in a week. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you know, it's just. I know, man. And it's, uh, I think it's just a hunger of just trying to get in front of. Because I'm so confident. Mr. James has made me this confident. And I'm starting to believe in myself. Mm. And every, what everybody has taught me, I know that if I do it exactly how you told me, if I can get in front of you, my percentage of walking out with the policy goes up very, very high. Yeah. And so that's kind of my goal. Like, just let me sit on your couch, mm. and I can almost guarantee you a policy is going to come out of it. Yeah. You know? And you're going to help them. Yes, sir. Improve their situation. Move them to a better place. Yes, sir. I mean, that's our goal here. So, Trey, man. Phenomenal story. I love it. You're pacing over 6,000 right now a week, not four, six. Yes, sir. You're on pace if you just keep up this run to do close to $300,000 this year, your first full year in the business. Yes, sir. That is something very commendable. Get a couple um, pair of Jordans with that. Yeah, yeah, you could buy a couple more pair of those Jordans. So. Ja Mr. James and I uh, split business last week. 
down the half on 20 leads and wrote 10K. So we each wrote, he wrote a little bit more than me for some apps he had last week finished up, but we each wrote for about 5K this week on splitting business. So yeah, there you go. it was a pretty good week. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Well, for those of you who are listening, you can connect with Trey. You can find him at TreyWright33 on Instagram. You should follow him. Follow his journey. Every yep. now and then, he'll post up a picture of uh, some people that he's helped or blessed. Please um, do. I'm trying to get my cloud up. So I'm trying to get your cloud <laughs> up. Please send me some There follows. you go. He's also mentoring people now. He's actually growing his own business team. So uh, phenomenal young man. His incredible story. Like I said, if you haven't listened to the previous episode with Trey, you got to go back. This guy is a life changer. He's had his life changed, and now he's out there changing other people's lives. Thanks, man, for letting us in on your process a little bit today. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. We'll see you next time. <laughs>